Um, I'm just curious, uh, how many of you uh, actually heard about forecast combination before this session? Uh, it's about 50%. It's a little bit sad because this 50% uh, uh, does not seem to change over the years. So I still see uh, in uh, companies that the way they go about uh, forecasting, they uh, test few models and, and they uh, chalk, they throw out the bad performing. And I'm thinking to myself, this is absolutely money on the table. And this is a, this is a nice session to uh, talk about this because this is highly related to um, uh, what the first speaker um, who talked about the uh, Fable uh, package. And this, this uh, I'm gonna present today the forecast combination package, which actually talks about forecast combination. So that's, uh, that's quite an apt name. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Aran Aviv. I work for APG Asset Management. And there are three parts for this talk. A little bit about the actual forecast comp package. Um, and given the fact that 50% of you actually heard about forecast combination, I would like also to put it in a wider context. Um, and then uh, I want to tell you a story about how, how this package actually came to be. In our context, uh, this is very similar to uh, what the first speaker was talking about. You simply have a few forecasts and the most simple way is to average them. Uh, why do you want to do that? Because it works. It works, that is to say, uh, oftentimes you, are end up, you end up with a, with a prediction which is better than your best performing model. This is what it means. And it's not very intuitive, but we will talk about it in a second. Uh, why does it work? We have some intuition, but we don't have it theoretically stapled just yet. The intuition is simply, you know, every model captures different aspects uh, of, the, of the data, and then combining them prevents biases and smooth out uh, um, the model risk, so to speak. Um, you already saw uh, uh, electricity load, so this is the UK electricity so, uh, supply data. We have here in the black line, we have the actual uh, data. And then you uh, apply the few forecasting models, and then you, you got the forecast, basically. And then uh, in the package itself, you have this uh, structure. This is basically the workhorse. Uh, this brings the data into usable format. And uh, let's have a look a little bit on the individual performance. This is quite easy. You can uh, basically, uh, the accuracy metrics is root mean squared error, and then you see the individual uh, performance on the train and on the test set. You can see how uh, uh, user friendly the code is. So the dot M uh, is basically the best model, and then you have uh, similar performance of the other model. And then uh, this is actually from the book uh, by uh, Rob Heinemann and, uh, and George. Rob is sitting in the audience, I saw. Uh, combining, in many cases, make dramatic performance simply by averaging them. And this is another example. Uh, here, you, instead of simple average, maybe I, I uh, here at this point in time, I say uh, the package itself provides a slew of, or a battery of ways in which you can uh, combine forecasts. So that's another way. And uh, here, ba basically, you have uh, the dependent, and then the weights are coming from uh, ordinary least squares. So you, you minimize the, the residuals. And the combined forecast is uh, the, the bias, and then uh, you use those coefficients as weights. Let's have a look. Uh, how simple combination does. So the best model is dot M, and if you combine SA for simple average, you don't get uh, better than, than the best. But it also uh, is quite robust, so you don't need to choose between them. Because you don't know beforehand, or going forward, you don't know that dot M is gonna be, and if you simple average, then you get very close to the optimal. If you do, uh, you apply OLS combination in this case, you perform uh, actually substantially better than the best. So you can see the accuracy metric 
is really uh, 0 0.67. This is really just a, uh, an example. Uh, usually I don't advocate uh, OLS combination because it has other uh, issues, um, which I will uh, discuss uh, later. These are the weights coming from the, from the, and then have a look what the, uh, this is a non-convex combination, which is a little bit strange. So what the machine does, it takes a 1.6 or 1.7 of that model and subtract uh, the forecast of uh, dump EDT. So it's really funny uh, a kind of combination to explain. Usually if you sit in a room with a few experts, and you, you think, okay, this guy is a little bit more experienced than that guy. So you say, okay, I'm going to wait 70% your opinion and 30% the other opinion. This is e more easy to explain, uh, but for this case, uh, not so. Um, and then what I want to show, uh, what actually is happening? How come uh, this works? So uh, let's have a look, uh, say, in this, in this area here. So you can see the individual models, they are undershooting the black line, right? So with the non-convex, you can actually reach the black line. So it takes the, these two models, uh, the green one and the blue one, and then it goes there. So that's kind of nice to see, uh, because this happens in uh, many important areas so funny enough, this particular uh, combination of forecast, non-convex one, the, the machine learns and then uh, using those two models, it, ca it manages to catch up to the black line. So this, this is the intuition behind uh, why OLS combination actually works in this case. Uh, a little bit about forecast uh, com, uh, com package. Uh, some things are trivial. You, you know, take the simple average, take the, take the median. Uh, some things are more complicated. Um, you can do uh, accuracy base. We implemented a um, few more or less state of the art, what is now known in the literature. Uh, this, this presentation will be online. Everything is clickable. Uh, so you can have a look uh, what, what kind of uh, methods are implemented over there. And then uh, you have regression-based method. This is a, a method called complete subset regression, fairly recent. Um, basically, you create a forecast. So you have six explanatory variables, in our case, six uh, prediction models. You create all combinations, so based on x1, x2, x1, x3, x1, x4, and so forth. You create a lot of those and you can combine them. This is called complete subset regression. Uh, the package gives you a lot of structures, so um, plotting summary and all kind of methods to uh, be uh, user uh, friendly. There is no magic, so if you have shitty uh, inputs, then you will uh, not manage whatever you slice and dice it. You will not manage to get a... Oh! <laughs> garbage in, garbage out, eh? So uh, it's, not, it's not as if you can input GD uh, individual performance and then get back a very nice combined forecast. Out of things combination. So here I, uh, I wanted to give a little bit more uh, context. We have seen today random forest. We have seen also bagging as part of random forest. This is also, this is also forecast combination. So I, I put this in context, eh? what bagging does is creating a lot based on subsamples and random forest is also taking chunks from the individual columns. Uh, moving average, this is also a forecast combination. So you have the long-term forecast and you have the forecast which is based on the, on the short, short term. Uh, shrinkage is also a forecast combination. And recently, uh, if you st study the uh, deep, uh, deep learning, and so you have inception blocks. When, when I read that, 
this is basically applying a few different hyperparameters. Um, so this is also a forecast combination. And now, uh, again, I'm going to cruise through. This is like a, a, a long list of literature review, and you can see how strong this uh, topic is. You have across different uh, windows, uh, across forecasting horizons. Uh, you have rectified, uh, I think, again, um, uh, Rob Heinemann. Uh, hierarchy of time series, again, Rob Heinemann. Uh, hierarchy of time series, uh, maybe a word on that. You, you can, so if you think about the CPI, you can create a forecast for the CPI, but you can also create forecasts for the individual components of the CPI. And then uh, this paper says something about the optimal way in order in which you can combine these. Across information criteria, you have AIC, BIC, and so forth. Uh, you have for density and probabilities for uh, vector autoregression for variety risk, uh, for uh, interval forecasts, um, for factor models, considering outliers across quantiles. So uh, the point here is not to, uh, I think this is also more for as a handout. Eh? So for those of you who are interested, they can click on this. Uh, and then a few attempts to try and explain the puzzle or how come simple average works and maybe the, I think the most intuitive explanation is the, the bottom one, which says uh, it's hard for us to determine the weights. And these weights, they are noisy. So if those weights are more or less close to equal, then forget about trying to move it from if you have two forecasts uh, and then they are 0 0.55 and 0 0.45, Forget about uh, trying to move them from 0 0.5 to 0 0.55 because you can end up in 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. So then you are better, uh, but again, more research would be nice for us to know exactly what's the kind of like the threshold in which simple average go for it. Coming back to our intuition, uh, so you see it's simply every model has the assumptions and uh, some of it are kind of false. More literature is coming. Uh, this is from March, a Journal of Econometrics. Uh, before, I, before I came here, I saw uh, yesterday there was an International Journal of Forecasting from the M4 competition. There is a paper on how to combine uh, interval forecast. And finally, very quickly, I wanted to say a few words on how the package uh, actually uh, was born. Uh, I just gave a presentation like this at work. Uh, and then I thought, well, I can write the, the code for that presentation. So you can see that was in, uh, what is this, uh, 2015. Uh, and then uh, I got an email. Uh, and this, this is an important point. Uh, I think most of you in the, quiet, uh, the crowd also, also get email. And sometimes uh, you will dismiss it a little bit. But the point here, you never know uh, what will come out of this. Eh? So the, the guy who wrote uh, this email, he wrote another forecast combination package uh, implementing something different. And then we collaborated and we uh, combined for forces. And uh, what is also nice, I I've never met those guys. So we, we have worked a lot together. So a lot, a lot. And always, uh, with nowadays, you don't have to so one guy is in uh, Dublin and the other one is in, in uh, Cambridge and I, I am Amsterdam based. So you simply, uh, every three weeks, you set up a uh, one hour Skype call on, uh, on, uh, on Sunday. And with these tools, you can really, you can really make it. And I, uh, I think I will not uh, recognize them if I see them on the street, <laughs> which is amazing given all the amount of work that we did together. And uh, this is, this, uh, uh, we uh, submitted the, the actual paper for the art journals, which is also an excellent journal. So in terms of treatment, and it's also increasing in uh, impact. Uh, so that was amazing experience. That's it. Questions, comments, wishes?
at the end, you concluded that you could collaborate or that collaborators could combine yeah. across borders. Yeah. How do we take that to back to the idea of combining models? Yeah, well, uh, I actually think uh, one of the motivations, so uh, there is a lot of ecosystem and uh, for everything you want to do, you probably get like four or five. And so it's not a bad idea to uh, where possible to uh, bunch them together. Thank you. More questions, comments, wishes? Okay, so um, we have been very good, I think, what the speakers have been very good at keeping their time, so we're actually slightly ahead of time for the break. Thanks a lot. <laughs>